Hi, I'm Chris Dane Owens, and I'm the, one of the stars and co-director, co-writer of the project. Hey there, I'm Jason Scholz, uh, also co-writer, co-director, and a star of the film. My name is Ciel Post, and I play Ara Winter. And I'm Nicholas Repetto, the composer of the film. So I had the pleasure of watching this movie, okay. and I loved it, it was amazing. Chris, could you give me a quick summary of what the film is about and kind of the backstory of how it came to be? Sure. Um, a number of years ago, I was about to finish up an album that I was doing as a singer, and I wanted to do a showcase piece music video for it. And I thought, wouldn't it be neat to make a music video that reflects my love of fantasy and, uh, and one that maybe looks like the trailer to a high-end fantasy movie that doesn't actually exist? So I got together with Jay, who's my producing partner, and we came up with a plan for how to, how to make it uh, on a reasonable dime. We shot it on 35 millimeter film. And cut to a couple months later, the video was done. I put it out before my album was even out, and it actually took off for me. And, New Yorker Magazine called it the best video of the year, and uh, we decided let's try to make this a trilogy. So we made a second video, which is called Lightspeed, and that expanded the story. And CL Post is the star of both music videos, and Jay is a, also a character in it. And then an agent approached me and he said, this would make a really cool movie. Have you ever thought about doing that? And I said, well, yeah, that'd be great, but movies cost so much. I don't know if we have that in the budget. Well, cut to a couple years later, and we worked with uh, producer and executive producer Kiki Coral. She was able to help secure the first funding for the film. We were very quickly in production on it, and a couple years later, we have a finished motion picture that is really a retelling of the original Shine On Me and Lightspeed music videos. So one of the things that stood out to me was the immaculate sound design and score. Um, with you having a musician background, how important was it for you to not only tell a story um, through the writing, but also through the music as well? And also, I think, um, if you would like to... <laughs> sure, yeah. I mean, um, it was, being that Chris is a musician and, and you know, it, it came from a music video, we had many discussions that the score should be kind of epic and bombastic and very driving. Um, also had to tackle like big themes like adventure, um, romance, um, magic, all these bigger themes. Uh, also the hero's journey. So, um, you know, Chris and I, in our discussions, we said we have to have an orchestral score with choir. Um, it has to like propel the story forward. And literally there's like, I think, two hours and like 10 minutes of music for the two. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big score for a big film, that's the thing. Um, and I, we have themes for all the three characters sitting here, like Jade, uh, Ara, and Sterling's theme, and you know they're all whimsical in their own way. Like uh, Ara's theme is like magical. It, it it starts off kind of quirky because she's learning magic, and then it gets like a little bit more noble as she perfects her magic. Um, Jade's theme is like very heroic. Um, Sterling is like kind of worldly and like romantic because he's a swashbuckler, um, and then we have. Um, uh, the evil queen has her own with her minions has their own theme which is like dark brass and creepy choir saying things um, and it, 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 it kind of like encompasses like all these themes through the music and uh, it was a long process I think it took like six months to do the whole score because it's a lot of music and a lot of writing <laughs> I will say too that uh, music is such a central part of the film and as we were making the film and building out the uh, the rough cuts and so forth we were using temp tracks from other big motion pictures and so forth. And I got so used to hearing our scenes with these epic scores. And I was so fearful that I was gonna be so disappointed when we take out the temp track and put in whatever music uh, that we were gonna wind up getting for the film. And then when we wound up having Nick do his uh, magic and marrying it together with our scenes, I forgot all about the temp tracks. That became the Empire Queen music, and uh, even to a higher degree, because it was original to us, it embraced the characters more specifically and so forth. So, yeah, as Chris has even said before, the music is also a character in the film. That's like the best compliment a composer can get. <laughs> so you beat the yeah. temp. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Another thing that stood out to me were the filming locations. Where did you guys shoot the movie? We actually got really lucky. Um, CL was living in Portland, Oregon at the time, so we went there first. And we got so much of our footage there, uh, the, the forests and the oceans, and we even shot in a cave there, and there's waterfalls. 
Um, then we shot in, some in Los Angeles, a little bit in Chicago, and actually we have some, some second unit in Hawaii. So we've got a lot of different things. Um, we wanted to take the audience on a journey, and we think that we did. Yeah, and you know, actually, California has such great terrain and diverse landscapes and so forth. And even in the LA area, you'd be surprised at some of the things that you can find if you just put a little bit of effort into it. And I think it's also key that, uh, you know, we also picked uh, the right times of the season to film certain locations too. So we could be transported to something that had more of a New Zealand look, for example, without having to go more than, you know, seven or eight miles within the valley area, for example. So, yeah, we just had to get really clever, but we were also very specific on choosing things that offered something more than just some sort of customary location. Uh, this question is for CL. You play a peasant with magical powers. What did you like most about playing your character? <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I loved that I had magical powers. It'd be cool if I actually had them. Um, no, you know, I think Aura was just really, um, you know, spunky and a little bit sassy. And, and the thing I liked about her the most is she's a bit naive to, she's just super, super, um, just young in her spirit. And I can absolutely relate to that part of her. So yeah, she I liked I liked her fun, not so serious sides, just her more playful, sassy, uh, really, really young young sides to her. And the fact that she could, you know, speak to little woodland creatures and do magic. <laughs> Cause who doesn't want to speak to, you know, have a little mouse named Poppet. So And transport herself. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. That's a cool trick. Yeah. Uh, Jason, I was laughing a lot at your character Sterling scene, specifically the scene in the cave with the skeleton and on the beach with the woman. Um, how much fun did you have working on this and had you worked with anybody else um, before? No, you know, I n never really set out to, to be an actor in the beginning. And, you know, this character evolved out of the music videos, you know, where we just were filling the frames of shine with the people in costume and so forth. and put myself in, in that regard and then it grew a little bit more in light speed and then all of a sudden it turns into a character in The Empire Queen and, and so I had a lot of fun with it because it's not something that you know I had it really expected or pursued in the past and you know even though it was fun there was a lot of hard work involved with it too and a lot of trekking and we were just you know going into caves and climbing rocks and so forth so the fun of it was there, but there was also a, a very laborious part about it too. So yeah, I enjoyed the adventure of the process, but you know we all contributed and and did what we could to you know to pull off the day and you know get things done on time and so forth. So um, it was kind of a, a mix of both like being in work mode uh, and you know figuring out what is coming next and getting it in, in advance of you know what you're currently doing. Uh, but also trying to just kick back and have fun in that moment of being the character, doing these fun, adventurous things. And it was fun. It was very physical, actually, uh, in going around all these locations and some, some real falls and so forth that wound up on camera. Uh, but uh, thank God that they actually worked. <laughs> curiosity, did you guys shoot in order or was it like by location? It was very much out of order and yeah, the location informed what we wanted to shoot for sure. Uh, we would know if we were going to a cave that day, we get everything that involves a cave. Uh, when we went to Portland, that was, you know, several days of very specific uh, scripted elements that we wanted to get. So that helped us a lot because we basically could check those off the list each time we got a new location down. And then of course then we had to get a little bit clever about things afterwards with reshoots and pickups and so forth so uh, we really got good at mastering the art of the cheat and making some of these locations that we had formerly been to uh, we had to recreate them in certain respects uh, in order to pick up these shots later seal because your character has magical powers anyone can answer this question by the way if you had to choose between shrinking anything you wanted to take with you at all times <laughs> or transporting yourself anywhere you wanted which would you choose and why Oh, great question. Uh, probably transporting myself anywhere. Um, can I go back in time? <laughs> no? <laughs> hey, that's up to us. I think we, we can yeah. Yeah. It's done. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely would transport myself. Um, I mean, wouldn't you, right? Yeah. 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 Just go places. Right. Elsewhere, we all disappear. Yeah. There's so many places. <laughs> regularly that I don't want to be, so of course, <laughs> of course I would absolutely um, 
transport myself. Yeah. Wrong, but doesn't your character, when she transports herself, she doesn't, she doesn't know where she's going? That's right, the elsewhere charm. She yeah. hasn't perfected it yet. That's true. So, but you, but you know what? There's there's an excitement level to that. So, exactly. We at yeah. one point we were actually going to have her go to like seven locations before she finally got where she needed to oh go, my God. <laughs> and each worse than the ra than the one before. Um, but we decided to just do the one, a couple funny examples. Lastly, I think audiences would like to know where they can watch Empire Queen, uh, The Golden Age of Magic. Sure. Um, right now we're on Prime Video on, and on Vimeo as well. And shortly we'll be on um, iTunes, Vudu, Google Play. And I would be surprised if there's quite a few other platforms we add over the next couple of months. Would there happen to be any sequels? We would love to sequel this movie. We're hoping we find our audience and that they enjoy the movie like we did making it and that they want to come on this journey with us and we can do a second and a third. We actually have plans to do a trilogy if all goes well. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.